Hey, Mark, how are you doing? Can you hear me all right? Yeah. Excellent. Hi, Mark. Uh, hey, nice Ian, how are you here. going? Yeah, great good, to meet you. Good. Wonderful. So who's looking after the slide deck? That would be me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hopefully everyone can see that all right. Wonderful. They can. Yep. I'll leave you both to it, and I'll join you at the end of your presentation. Looking forward to hearing from you both. Great. Thanks a million, Mark. Thank you. So hi, everybody. Uh, good afternoon, good evening, whatever whatever time it is where you're joining us from. Um, and welcome to our session today, where we're going to be talking about unlocking the power of the Open API specification in the last mile of your life cycle. And I am delighted to be joined by Yin Zhu, who is the product manager at Swift. So Yin, if you want to introduce yourself. Sure. Thank you, Joe. Uh, my name is Yin. Uh, I work in Swift. So uh, I'm my colleagues, Rich and Neil. And I'm sure if you stayed earlier, um, you just heard their wonderful presentation on API standardization. Uh, so uh, in case you have not heard their session, well, in Swift, we deliver financial messages uh, across border in a fast and secure way to, um, to more than 200 financial institutions in the world. I mean, financial institutions in more than 200 countries in the world. Uh, I'm really thrilled to be here with all of you today virtually, um, thanks to API Days that has brought us all here together to talk about APIs. Um, I'm going to share my experience working with the open APIs and how we've used it to make our APIs easier to consume by our uh, end customers today. Okay. Sounds good. So yeah, I suppose the kind of, <clears throat> jumping off point that we have for the conversation today is, uh, and Yin, your, your introduction reminded me that I, I forgot to introduce myself quite usefully. Um, <laughs> so yeah, my, my name is Joe, uh, and I'm a solutions engineer with, uh, with SmartBear. Um, and I suppose kind of the, the relevant SmartBear tool in the context of today's discussion is, is Swagger Hub, which is a design and collaboration platform for, for open API definitions. So it's the kind of platform that you might use to get to a scenario like the one you know, we're looking at on the on the slide here is, you know, the part of the life cycle where everybody has agreed on, you know, the current or the latest version of the API definition. So, so what comes after that? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, love to talk about that. We do use Swagger Hub inside of inside Swift um, to communicate and uh, collaborate and design our APIs. Um, I think that Rich and Neil has also also touched upon that point earlier in terms of the challenges in standardizations uh, of API designs. So I'm speaking from my own experience working with the APIs we have in Swift. Um, some of our APIs are, are relatively easier to use, and then some of our APIs are really uh, not as easy, right? So you can imagine, for example, we have APIs that are just getting the the details of a BIC, right? What is a BIC? BIC stands for the business identification code. This is like the email address for financial institutions. Um, so this information is actually in the public domain, right? So um, I mean, it, before it was in a big book, and now we have APIs that you're able to get information via APIs um, programmatically. Um, but this kind of APIs doesn't require uh, very complex authentication, right? So usually it's simple to authenticate and the data elements that you re receive are very straightforward. Um, but most of our APIs are indeed uh, highly confidential, right? So uh, these requires very complex security models and it has uh, pretty complex data elements because it's trying to de describe very complex um, data relationships. So, I mean, at the end of the day, our APIs are not very easy to consume. So kind of going back to the point, now even if you have the best design and um, you have the um, the best implementation on the APIs, and then you have um, you know the API de delivered in great quality, um, but it is still not necessarily guaranteed that customers can use the APIs uh, right away, right? Mm. Um, I mean, I mean, I think gladly here in Swift, we we do follow a design first approach, so where we put the AP, we put a lot of efforts in API design, so making sure that the API design itself is going to be um, uh, easily adoptable by our, our, our clients and our customers. So 
I think that is kind of the number one for um, to make API easier to adopt by the customer is indeed the API design. Um, so yeah, but I mean, like like I said, um, even after you have the great design, that adoption, I guess the last mile we call it, is still very very mm. crucial um, when it comes to customer actually, you know, using it, learning it, and then uh, in production. No, for sure, and and I think you know something that we. You know, we talk about quite a bit in SmartBear with regards to, to Swagger Hub and with regards to, you know, open API definitions is that, you know, if you're only using your open API definitions as kind of a static reference, you know, you're, you're kind of not getting the most out of them that you could, right? Because you could, you know, we all know the, the kind of, there's a very broad range of support out in the ecosystem for, you know, what you can do with your open API definition kind of further along the life cycle. So that could be anything from, you know, in terms of adoption. Yeah you know, coupling your definition with the documentation that the that the user is actually, you know, viewing and consuming and kind of crucially making sure that those two things are always, you know, in sync. Yeah. 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 No, absolutely. Um, I, I, I think, I think we, I think at, at, at this moment, we all agree that the API um, documentation is really, really important. Um, so it's, it's, it's allowing you to do a lot of, um, it's allowing you to be able to do a lot of things and really um, kind of uh, automate your pipelines. Um, I, so for, for our approach, really, our approach is to adopt the open API standard, right? Because we really believe the open API standard is the linchpin of the business definition and the technical implementation and customer adoption. Right, because it is the first source of truth where we can all rely on when it comes to, um, you know, uh, you know, when we comes to producing those artifacts, right? Um, code and SDKs and test suites and API documentation, sandboxes, mm -hmm. and we know that at the end of the day, right, we're all going to be talking about the same thing. I think it's very, very important. Um, and be and also the Open API standard has a very rich ecosystem. I think we all. We all know that you know there are many tools and applications that's available out there that could help us generate these artifacts very quickly. Mm. So I think that is really immense benefit that that really speed things up for us. Um, you know, in my point of view, um, I am the product owner of the so developer portal that you just seen, <laughs> developerpros.com. So yeah. a lot of the information we publish on there are not handwritten by us, right? I mean, especially when we're looking at really complex API. Um, APIs, which we have um, data elements that are multi-layer nested, um, it's just not it's not going to be uh, uh, possible for us to really create that documentation manually. So we need tools to generate them. Um, and good thing is, uh, with this very rich ecosystem around open API standards, uh, we have we can choose between the different tools, and um, they all they provide great um, developer-friendly documentations. Um, and, and that has always been uh, one of the best uh, thing in terms of using the open API standards. No, that's that's really interesting. And, and like, I suppose, you know, from, from a Swift perspective and specifically with regards to the, the developer portal, you know, in your experience, was it a case where, you know, a certain amount of time ago, there was a lot of manual kind of maintenance and updating involved with the dev portal? And you know, was there kind of a conscious decision made? Okay, we need to kind of move away from that and try to, you know, leverage the the tools that are out there to, you know, make make it something more automated. Right. I I, I think. Um, I, I mean, we're here today to talk about APIs, and um, it, it is basically the future of a lot of of, of basically uh, IT services, right? Um, I mean, in the old days where you know you 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 pay and then you buy you buy an app uh, application and then you go through the, the 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 documentation and try to figure out how to use right maybe it's mm. RPCs but now we're looking at APIs that are that that are meant to be easy to adopt and easy to use and that implies that a documentation has to be easily accessible right so we have to take out those documents that are static in like embed in PDFs and we could have to take them out into more uh, consumable web content, right? With all that developer friendly features that you can imagine like search capabilities, syntax highlighting, examples and, and sharing capabilities. So these are all the points that um, our customers are looking for these days. And, and therefore, you know, the, the old way of documentation will not, no longer 
uh, work in, in, in the ecosystem of APIs. And, and, and therefore it's, it's very crucial that we are able to kind of generate these docs um, uh, kind of, you know, on demand and, and, and quickly and accurately and in a developer friendly way. So. Absolutely. <clears throat> so I suppose that's, that's a little bit on the, the documentation side. Um, and you mm -hmm. mentioned as well, you know, that as well as the open API definition, having its uses from a documentation perspective and from a kind of consumer perspective, you know, there's, there's obviously quite a bit you can do with an open API definition. If you're kind of part of the internal team that's working on that API project, right? Whether you're a tester or, you know, a developer, whether it's generating test cases or, or generating server stuff. So, you know, I think, I think we'd be interested to find out how, how that's been implemented in Swift. Yeah. So, um, we, I mean, I, I think also uh, the, the previous talk, we touched upon that a little bit as well. So the open API specification is used to generate a lot of artifacts. So uh, including code, right? And including tests. So we have the test teams that are using this open API specifications to generate test cases. Um, and then so that then you can, you can ensure the quality of the API service that's being delivered. Um, and, and, and obviously knowing that the API service the code side is generated off of API specification. You can already ensure from the interface level, there is a, a level of quality assurance, right? Um, so the test team, um, you know, they what they really need to focus on are more functional related testing. So this is all creating efficiency uh, in terms of delivering the service um, and end to end. Um, from uh, my personal point of view, uh, experience point of view, um, because I run the so developer portal and we, uh, apart from the API documentation we provide, we also provide a, uh, a sandbox. Uh, these sandbox are, um, are, are, are not a real production service. However, it does provide uh, insights and it does provide uh, a, a, a place for, for developers to test things out, right? So. Uh, not just consuming the static documentation, but they have an endpoint and they can try it out and they're able to, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 get uh, API responses that are, that are, that they know are like uh, a schema compatible, for example, where they can use to kind of test out their applications. Um, so a generating of sandbox for us, it's very, um, that, seems to be a, 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 cons a time consuming effort, but mm -hmm. using the open API standard, we're able to generate some bugs really, really fast. And then, so, you know, you can literally use like Swagger CodeGen, which is an open source tool to generate the server side stubbing. And then you can really put, you know, right now we're using samples. So, so we're not really putting too much logic into our server. So we're able to generate some boxes uh, that would respond with a sample, a sample responses like in literally a few hours, right? And once we have that, we're able to spend more time looking at enhancing the sandbox, how to make that sandbox more powerful and more useful. Um, and in, in uh, right now, uh, actually recently we've launched a feature on developer portal, um, it's called the uh, API playground, where we're able to mesh different API sandboxes and really create or generate a, a end-to-end -end API flow that will be able to walk the developers through um, on a common use case, right? In this case, we're, we're picking use case that are very commonly uh, uh, used uh, for mm -hmm. our APIs, that is to validate and track a payment, right? So we're able to really kind of walk developers through of what are the, the APIs they can use in terms of validating the payment, and then later on, what are the APIs they can use in terms of tracking the payment. And all this is made possible because we're able to, you know, generate these server steps very quickly, and then it allow us to have time to really look at how we can glue all these different sandboxes together to create a better experience for the customers and for our developers. Yeah, for sure. If and, I have like, time, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Oh, if we have time, I'd like to give you a demo. But yeah, um, we'll see uh, if the time allows. No, absolutely. I think I think we're doing OK for time so far. And, you know, what, what I was just going to ask kind of based on that last point was, you know, obviously we demo Swagger Hub all the time. And a big part of that is collaboration and a big part of that is feedback. But, you know, it sounds like from your experience, you know, the feedback is extremely important in that scenario where the quicker you can get the sandbox up and running, yep. you know, the less time spent on the logic, the better, the more time spent on actually getting communication from the end users to find out 
okay, yeah, this works, this doesn't work. Maybe we could try it like this. Maybe we could try it like that. It sounds like that's kind of the, that's where the value comes from as opposed to, you know, kind of spending more time over to the left of the, of the process. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think that, that also, uh, like that also echoes into the API first uh, approach, right? So we, we I mean, cause it's, that is really the time where th that is really, uh, the place where it, it, it is less costly to make changes, right? Compared mm -hmm. to when you're more switching to the right, right side, right hand side. So yeah, I think you know, having a sandbox and having the ability for developers to test early is, is a great advantage and then receiving that feedback so that we can, um, get those comments, you know, in the early stage uh, towards the left. No, absolutely. No, that's that's really interesting to hear. Um, you know, and the kind of the the kind of you know the the last point really on on the third slide is about you know as well as using the definition to, you know, kind of drive parts of the life cycle that are, you know, kind of extremely user facing or or very kind of visually present to the user. You can also you know look at an open API definition as kind of a config file for some mm -hmm. system kind of downstream in the process right whether that is a, a gateway or whether it's a you know a management platform or something like that so you know I'd, I'd definitely be interested to hear if you know what are swift kind of doing in that regard if they're doing anything with you know keeping an open api definition and, and using it to keep a gateway up to date with what you know how many endpoints are in this particular version of the api you know that that type of that type of use case yeah absolutely um Open APIs is is is, is a wonderful thing. So uh, we are definitely using it in the uh, gateway configurations as well. I think um, we are using a a gateway to help us to really deliver our APIs in a in a, a very standard um, a fashion, right? In terms of standard security models and um, giving a good experience for our customers. So they're not expect they will not be seeing like they were not having different experience from one API versus to the other. So mm -hmm. um, and most APIs these days are actually, uh, you know, accepting open API specifications. So you can literally just load the, the APIs and then all your endpoints are, are, are created like automatically, right? So it, it really saves you these kind of more um, mundane and kind of um, a, a tedious work where, you know, yeah. where you have to kind of like enter these things automatically, which doesn't create a lot of value, right? Because that's where you don't, that's not where you want to spend your time on. You want to spend your time configuring the policies and, and making sure things are, things are, are tested, you know, end to end. So that's why I think the, the open API specification can really help organizations in terms of um, uh, provide efficiency, right? Uh, making mm -hmm. like you know, uh, allowing their developers, their, uh, their you know, their testers to focus on the things that they really need to focus on. Exactly, yeah. Kind of focus on the on the interest and stuff, and you know, keep the, yeah. the kind of manual stuff to a minimum. I think we have a yep. couple of minutes, so um, Ian, if you want to to give us a quick look at at how that code gen is used in Swift, that might be interesting for um, for the people watching. Sure. So I think I can. Um, Stop sharing here, and you should have the option to. All right. So there we go. Um, are you able to see my screen? Yeah, sure. And that's that's coming up oh. now. Perfect. So yeah, this is the developer portal, um, a new feature um, that we launched recently. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, I'm just gonna go through a little bit of background, and I'll bring out the Swagger code in uh, in 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 a little bit. So, um, in a, a cross-border financial transaction, it's actually um, it usually goes through uh, hops, right? Especially it is a cross-border transaction, so it goes through as a sender. You want to send. Uh, you know, some funds to uh, a receiver. It goes through multiple banks or multiple financial institutions. Um, so, and th this is really not a, um, I would say a, um, a, a public domain knowledge, right? A lot of people might not really know what happens when you're sending uh, some money to your friends or your family members in another country. So when it comes to, you know, how do, how does, uh, developers use the APIs to carry out the flow, there's a lot of questions. So we've thought to build a, a, uh, a playground, we call it, where we can showcase a bit about the flows, right? Um, and how that works. So that's a combination of the business domain as well as um, the APIs uh, from a technical point of view. 
so here you see all the actors and we, we kind of showcase a bit about what the scenario is. You know, this Hobson for China wanted to send some funds to optional export in Poland. And this is the banks that I have to go to. And when you get started, right, this is where the kind of um, uh, the really helpful, uh, you know, step by step uh, workflows and API flows that, that really help developers to understand how the APIs are being used. Right, so you are now looking at the this sender sender a company like a corporate that are trying to send money, and this is the information that they have. Right, they have like account number. This is the big, which is the identifier of the bank. This is the account number, and this is the amount of money they like to send. Right, and then at this point, they can do few validations. So, so this is where this is a bit of the business side. But then when they click on next, they're able to see on the right hand side the API console. Right, where okay, this is the this is the endpoint, and this is the URL that I need to call, and then they're able to get the response. So this is all powered by our sandbox, right? And this is obviously not going to our live server. It's going to sandbox.serve.com, and this is kind of the fake um, uh, 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 account numbers and the fake bigs that we have curated for the sandbox environment. But making these is really um, not time consuming, right? Uh, compared to what you, if you can imagine, like, you know, bringing in, like, you know, having to create a lot of uh, sandbox services, especially when we're looking at multiple APIs. So this is really what is um, kind of powering this whole application um, using um, uh, easily uh, usable Spiker code gen to generate sandbox services. And then we can see more APIs are being called. Um, and 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 kind of what are the in the in the orders where they are being called, and then we see these APIs, uh, you know, the request and response where customers uh, consumers can just you know use it to learn and you know copy and paste, and they they can try it on 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 their end, right? But but I think here really to say that um, we're able to build this because. We are we're able to use um, a, a tools to generate this sandbox quickly, and where allow us to spend more time looking at um, how do we convey the the usage of these APIs, right? We, we want to build the UI, we want to build out the flow, and that really allows us to be able to create a uh, a great experience for our end consumers. And we've been receiving great feedbacks in um, in after we've uh, delivered this feature. Because um, mm. it, it really helps people to understand. Oh, okay, yeah, this is how you I can use APIs, and great, I can I can try it out in the sandbox. Um, th this type of interactive documentation has really helped the um, um, adoption. Brilliant, and and the flow and the logic behind that application that's that's coming from the Open API definitions describing those services. Correct, correct. Yeah. So all we have is the, the, the all the input that we have is the open API specifications of the different APIs. And then, you know, that's where we get everything started. That's fantastic. Ian, thank you so much for the insights. It's really it's very good to hear, you know, kind of practical examples of you know the things that we talk about all the time in terms of, you know, this is this is the type of benefit that you get out of you know, having all your open API definitions in one place. This is what you could do with them. Yeah. So it really is, it's it's great to hear, you know, kind of hands-on scenarios where where those type of things are, are being utilized and done. So um really appreciate the demo. That that about wraps it up. I think mm -hmm. we're I think we're doing okay for time. Um if there are any questions at all, don't be don't be shy. And if you don't if you don't have any questions right now, um we do have a smart bear virtual booth. Um, that's going to be up and running today and tomorrow. So if you do want to stop by there and ask us any questions, um, by all means, hop in. Um, great. Yeah. So it looks like there aren't any questions. We, we explained everything perfectly, Ian. That's a good sign. <laughs> I think most people are already using the open API standards, which is which is great. Yeah, um, exactly, exactly. I think that's a that's a good sign.
Okay, okay. No. there's our, our wonderful MC. Were we blocking yeah. you out for a second there, Mark? <laughs> I, you were you were about blocking me out. That, that, yeah. we're, we're in now. We're all good. That, that was I was wondering. I was wondering how long you could hold hold the smile for another few minutes there. Just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You both did great. You were like, "Oh, any more questions? Anyone?" Yeah, like the the news anchors kind of just like, "Well, the credits roll." <laughs> <laughs> no, that was really wonderful. I loved seeing you know, how um, Swift is being able to build really developer friendly documentation there as well, and like taking the lessons from the Stripes and the and the Twilios of the world and being able to make a really interactive um, de developer experience where you don't have to, where you're not waiting for error messages before you find out mm. whether your query calls are right or not. It's fantastic. Mm. Okay, uh, and we'll stop sharing the slides. It's now break time. So we'll be off uh, until 3.30 uh, GMT and then we'll come back for to talk. And that's a really great, great leaving actually. We've talked about some life cycle issues and some standards and from there we're seeing now it coming into uh, the developer experience. And I love, so I love how you've set that up for the next set of talks. Um, thank you both. And thanks to all of our speakers for this session. We'll see you after the break. Join uh, Joseph and others in the Partners Village. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, thank you, everyone.